Welcome to JHEP's lesson on transpiration. The definition of transpiration is losing water from the plant's leaf cell through evaporation. Right, so what happens is the water comes up to the xylem um, uh, because of the transpiration pool, because of the difference in water pressure. And so it enters the leaf cell and it moves through the cells until it gets to the mesophyll cell. And the thing about mesophyll cells, especially with spongy mesophyll ones, is that they've got a lot and lots of space in it. So the water vapor just collects in those spaces. They seep out of the mesophyll, um, the mesophyll cells and collect in the spaces. And this difference, they collect and collect and collect until, um, until the water, um, until the amount of water vapor inside the air in those spaces is more than the water vapor outside in the atmosphere. And because of that, they say, "Oh, let's go," and they move down the stoma, move down the zone, the stoma, to the atmosphere. So technically, the water evaporates downwards past the stoma, not upwards, downwards. And remember, the stoma also opens and closes, so that can regulate the rate of transpiration as well. Okay, so for transpiration stream, the transpiration stream is just basically the continuous movement of water that travels up the xylem, moving to the mesophyll spaces and being evaporated to the atmosphere via the stoma and so on. And this is a passive process as well, remember, because it doesn't use ATP. I mean, where does the ATP even come from? Xylem are all full of dead cells, so they do not have mitochondria. Hmm. Um, obviously, with biology, there's always the rate of something, and obviously there is the rate of transpiration, and factors that affect transpiration as well. So first of all is humidity. I mean, just imagine going into the jungle, or going into a year 11, or year 12, or year 13 classroom, when they've been in that room for, what, two hours with none of the windows open. Basically, because the leaves are losing all this water from the leaves, it's actually just staying in the atmosphere. And since there is no wind to push them around, that's going to be our second factor that affects respiration, there are more water, there is more water vapour inside the atmosphere relative to other places like the United Kingdom, say for example. So, the more humid the atmosphere is, so the more humid the atmosphere is, the less the rate of, tra um, the less the rate of transpiration. Full stop. Okay, you can imagine because where would the water vapour go? So the next um, factor is humidity. Oh, it's wind actually. And the fact with wind is the wind moves those water vapour away that's just been transpired. It moves it away so that there is more space for it to, um, for the leaf to transpire the water just like well just like our red blood cells in the capillaries of our alveoli so the wind moves the transpired water away from the leaf so obviously the less the force of the wind so I don't know the less speed of the wind the less wind speed means um, less of water, less of transpiration. Yes, so less transpiration happens.
the next one, the next factor affecting transpiration is temperature. Now you may remember with when you did kinetic theory in GCSE that when it's hotter outside the, the particles vibrate more and because of that that vibration gets carried off to the um the potential the potentially you know to be transpired water vapor molecules inside the spaces near the spongy mesophyll so therefore it vibrates more the water vapor inside the spongy mesophyll like on the insides of it the spaces vibrate more and therefore it will be lost more so the higher the temperature the greater the rate of transpiration the higher the temperature the greater the rate of transpiration another factor is light intensity even though it doesn't really have a proportional side to it it still determines when the stoma opens and closes so obviously the absence and the presence of light tells you when the stoma opens and closes and technically the greater the light intensity the greater the rate of transpiration okay technically so the greater the light intensity the greater the rate of transpiration the next one is the surface area of the leaves obviously if you think about it this leaf will lose more to transpiration than this leaf partly because there are more spongy mesophylls and so on and so forth as more spaces but it's because of the surface area of it that makes it lose the water more there is more space for the water to be lost basically so the greater the surface area the greater the surface area of the leaves the greater the rate of transpiration next one is the availability of water in the soil think about it if the soil doesn't have any water where does the water come from for it to transpire so the greater the amount of water in the soil the greater the rate of transpiration the greater the amount of of water in the soil the greater the rate of transpiration and that's it but it's quite hard to measure the rate of transpiration just because um well it's just hard for scientists so scientists have developed an apparatus in order to um, find out the rate of water uptake in the xylem in order to determine the rate of transpiration and it is called the potometer the potometer and it's basically an apparatus where you put um, a stem not the root because remember there's millions and millions and millions of root hairs and lots and lots and lots of roots so it would be just practical if we just have a stem which has obviously a xylem in it and we put it into the apparatus submerged, um, is submerged in water all of the apparatus should be submerged in water due to the fact that we don't want any bubbles coming in or whatsoever to ruin this column of water that would be going up the xylem so we put it in the um, in the apparatus for the water and remember you need to remember to close the reservoir tap and then you can take it out of the water after you've um, after you put the stem with the airtight seal on and you've got to you've got to remember to put like a um, a meniscus 
inside like this like a little air bubble basically and you've got, you've got to mark it before you start the experiment where it's located and you mark it at the end due to the fact that we're measuring the distance between A and B the distance of how fast the meniscus is going and through that we can find out what the rate of transpiration is uh, remember to slant cut the stem cell which reduces um, which reduces the risk of the air being trapped inside it so if you slant it there's no there's no place for air to be trapped inside that's why injections and vaccines that needle if you look at it closely it's slanted and also needs to pierce your skin as well and that's it the whole reason um, for transpiration is to lose excess water water that it doesn't need and that's it for transpiration mm.